Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we have the press release for Cosmic Alpha 2 and guess what? I am running inside of Cosmic. This is Pop OS by the way and I missed the first alpha launch so here I am right now. We are talking about the Alpha 2. I'm really excited to talk about this so without wasting further time, it's already late at night. I have to edit this video. Let's dive right in. All right, welcome back, Cosmic Alpha 2, uh, System76, the premier Linux computer manufacturer and creator, has updated Cosmic's Alpha release to Alpha 2. The latest release includes more settings pages, the bulk of functionality for Cosmic files, highly requested window management features, and considerable infrastructure work for screen reader support, as well as some notable bug fixes. We're gonna go through all of that, and by the way, Cosmic is available for Pop! OS, obviously. It's even available for Fedora, Nix OS, Arch, OpenSUSE, Serpent OS, Redox, and Catchy OS. This journey began as a replacement for GNOME, the DE that was used in Pop! OS 22.04, which is what I am using right now, but I am logged into a Cosmic Alpha session and prior releases as a way to reimagine the desktop environment and the value that it can provide users across the Linux ecosystem. Some differences of note include a comprehensive theming system with shareable themes that is excellent, an option for either vertical or horizontal workspaces, integrated and easily accessible tiling system which is used by a lot of people, and highly customizable panels, dock, and the top bar. New core apps include Cosmic Files, Settings, Terminal, Edit, and an App Store, and the App Store, trust me guys, it's brilliant to replace the pop shop. Okay, starting with settings pages, we do get power and battery, and I'm not gonna show you the picture because we do have the picture, I mean, we do have the actual settings page over here with us. We're just gonna expand that. And here we are. So what were we checking? We were talking about power and battery. Let's go to power and battery. And as you can see, we do get extended battery life, reduced power usage and silent performance. So the fan speed is not gonna be that high. Balanced, quiet performance and moderate power usage, high performance, peak performance and power usage. You do get these three modes, very good to see. And by the way, if you do have connected devices, their battery also shows up here, which I believe is a fantastic thing. Now let's move on to the sound system. So sound panel, we do have output volume, output device, uh, input volume, input device. I am recording on the HyperX SoloCast analog stereo and it's an analog stereo input. I mean, it is configured as such, but I'm really speaking into a mono device. So that's that. We can select input and output devices, adjust volume for each on a slider, choose between a variety of sound profiles. So we could, we could do this, we could change the sound profiles. I'm not gonna mess with anything because I am recording on this computer, but you can understand we do get a lot of things. Bluetooth devices are now supported as well. That is really good and we're using BlueZ5. Network and wireless, let's just switch over to network and wireless. Where is it, by the way? I, okay, it's at the top. I missed it, guys, sorry. So we do have Wi-Fi. I am connected to my home network. Wired, the cable is unplugged, and the VPN connections are also not available. We can definitely add a network. We can select a VPN configuration. Uh, one thing that I, I'm not the biggest fan of is if I don't have the borders turned on, it just completely... Like I can't even make it out that this is a separate window and this is a separate window. I would love if some kind of indicator was there, but I mean, it's okay, it's still an alpha. Uh, we don't really get the right to complain about anything. Anyway, uh, we're just gonna cancel out of this. Wi-Fi connections, Wi-Fi profiles, pretty good. Moving on. Uh, so we do get wired connections to Wi-Fi options in range, very standard stuff, actually what we just talked about. And then we do get displays. 
So this is the displays. So this is your resolution. I mean, this is standard stuff, right? Refresh rate, 144 hertz. I did have scaling set at 125%, even though I normally use 100% with GNOME, but I believe this is more, uh, this is better suited for my eyes and as well for the video. I mean, it does render the web page to be a little bit large for the video. This is fine, but for my own personal use, I would just dial it back down to 110% probably on this device. And for X11 Windows system application scaling, we do get the option to scale all X11 applications. X11 applications will appear blurry on high DPI screens, or we could render X11 applications at native resolution, which is X11 applications that don't support scaling will be small when high DPI displays are in use. Enable this for games to utilize the full monitor resolution. That is pretty good. I love the explanations, by the way, that they give which is really good. So new X11 window application options and display settings allows you to enable sharper X11 apps as well as gaming at native display resolution. Pretty good. Now we do get the date and time and seconds toggle. So that's pretty good date and time. We're just gonna, we're just gonna hop over to a date and time, time and language. And over here we do get date and time and region and language. Very good categorized. I really love that. So it says date and time will automatically update when the time zone is set and I am in Asia slash Kolkata. Uh, so this is pretty good. We do get the complete list of time zones. Uh, I'm just going to leave it to whatever it is and you can change it to be a 24 hour. So you can see the change being reflected over here. Uh, we can show seconds. I'm not going to do that. Kind of distracts me first day of the week and show the date on top panel. You can totally Remove that if you want to. I like to have it enabled. And then you do get region and language. So this is empty right now. I mean, this is an alpha after all. That's completely fine. And by the way, I just updated the system for uh, making the video. So I believe everything should be in order. And then you get uh, a new window management features. So two highly requested features have been built into window management settings. Focus follows cursor and cursor follows focus okay so let's jump into desktop and it should be inside window management and you do get the option for super key action to open the launcher workspace other applications uh disable so you can pretty much customize a lot of things you can hide or show the maximize minimize button that's pretty good i remember gnome not having the the maximize thing and i would always just download an extension to do that this having the option by itself is so much better to be very honest and i do get focus follows cursor so i believe uh this would be where it's it's, it's going to focus if my cursor is in firefox it's going to move over to there and uh you can see it's happening again i would probably just keep it off and you can also do cursor follows focus so not totally sure how that works but Maybe you can write to me down in the comments. Okay, so they do mention focus follows cursor. Moving your mouse across your layout causes the active window to switch to whichever window the cursor overlaps, which we pretty much saw right now. And cursor follows focus is changing window focus with keyboard shortcuts or opening a new window causes your cursor to immediately snap to the top left corner of that window. This makes it easy to find your cursor and saves the trouble of having to move it to the window. Pretty good, actually. You can also disable the super key. So during alpha testing, we found out that some users like to disable, like to use the super key only as a modifier without any actions associated with it. So in alpha two, users can now disable the super key from the drop down menu in window management settings, which we just noticed. You can actually disable it and have it do other things as well. Very, very granular controls, and I really love that. New interface density settings, so we do get comfortable, compact, and spacious interface density settings. Adjust the spacing between elements throughout the Cosmic Desktop. The size of headers, uh, space between lists such as file names or settings options, space between applets and inside applets, adjust according to the settings preference. So we are going to go to 
Uh, okay, so what does it say? This feature was merged early to identify widgets and spacing that require adjustment. You may encounter unexpected spacing using compact and spacious. That is completely fine. We don't really worry about all of those. So uh, we're gonna go to displays. Oh, sorry, we're gonna stick to desktop and we're gonna go to appearance. And I believe it should be here. Okay, so this is compact. Okay, yeah, and this is spacious. A lot more space, I think. Comfortable is where I would like I would like to be because I don't really like this uh, like it doesn't have too much space here like I don't know to each their own you do get the option right any the best part is you don't even need to use extensions or any hacks or anything everything is available for you to control pick what you want and let's select a color I guess this looks good or even orange looks good let's just stick to yellow for the time being and you also can change the style so this is completely round. A squircle or slightly round and a square I believe I'm gonna leave it to slightly round this is pretty good and let's move on so for Bluetooth settings we can connect disconnect and forget devices from the new Bluetooth page that is very good where is Bluetooth over here so I mean Bluetooth is on but we don't really have anything else we can show devices without name that's something you can do if you want to do it okay now coming to Cosmic Files, right? Cosmic Files, a very, very good application. I really love it, by the way. Uh, a, a small tour before we begin diving into what's new. Uh, you can collapse the side panel, recents, home, documents, downloads, uh, picture, video, trash, network. Uh, you got a lot of things. In files, you can uh, do standard stuff, edit, view, nothing looks out of the ordinary about Cosmic Files. I really love how it opens up in the side over here. You can close it and you can also sort right from there. So that is pretty good. And the network tab, you can add a network drive over here. I mean, something which you absolutely need, right? So let's see what's new. Uh, building out Cosmic Files has been a main focus leading up to Alpha 2. New additions include search bar, new folder, grid list view, and sort by options added to the header. Things which we actually saw right now. Uh, where is files? Okay. There we go. You do get the option to search, which is pretty good. And recents added to the sidebar for viewing recent files. Also something which we saw right now. And you do get beautiful file previews. So showing you everything from created to modified to accessed. Preview files in context menu before opening. So this is what we saw right now. So they do mention that the preview feature is incomplete and in active development. Previews are active by default to elicit feedback during the second alpha. An option to disable previews will be added for alpha 3. Very good. Gallery is a new feature accessible from the preview. In gallery mode, users can cycle through images in a folder. Uh, you can also compress or compress or extract files from the right click menu as well as extract to a desired location. You get support for tar, tbz, tgz, txz, and dot zip, obviously. Support for password encrypted uh, zip files will be next, so we can expect that in alpha 3, I believe. Cosmic Store, vastly improved load times on initial startup. I believe this was already pretty excellent, and now maybe this is even better. Um, that's just that's just stupid fast that is stupid fast create work look at that look at that let's click oh my god it's instantaneous I, mean, I believe it does have only one screenshot but that's okay point is it's super fast and this was the first time that i opened uh the app store after many months so this was the first time and it was and it just updated like a few minutes ago so that's not really an issue. Okay, so now we're changing. Maybe it took a little bit of time to load because my internet isn't actually that good, despite it being, I mean, it's supposed to be very good, but it isn't, sad thing, right? It's instantaneous, it's just blazing fast. Flathub, KD Community Developer, Flathub Monthly Downloads, you get main features, you get the version number, what else do you need? Cheese, boom, work, Thunderbird, boom. It's so fast, dude. 
I mean, apart from the fact that the picture isn't loading, maybe it's just because of my internet. I don't really care. But this app, I it's just fantabulous. Man, the speed. And you know what helps this app be so fast is the lack of animations. Lack of animations isn't like a band-aid you put on top of this. This app is actually blazing fast, but the fact that it doesn't have animations makes it seem even faster. It's kind of like when your phone is getting older and you put a 0.5 times animation speed uh, for your Android UI and things seem faster. It kind of has the same effect because it completely doesn't have animations, but that doesn't, but let that not distract you from the fact that this app is actually very fast, even if it did have animations. Cosmic Applet. So now Cosmic Applet support battery charge thresholds on devices supported by System76 power. Pretty good. Improved CPU usage of audio applet volume sliders. Time now updates on time zone changes and improved format of displayed time. So these are applets, uh, battery applets. You can see discrete GPU is active and can reduce battery life. Luckily, I'm on AC power right now and I am set to balanced. Maybe high performance would have uh, would have been better, but it's fine for recording a simple video like this. And we do get tiling. So it's floating by default and it does give you the shortcuts. I already talked about this. Active hint, you can turn this on. So it would give the active hint. It's okay. I mean, I guess I can get used to it. It's not bad. It's just, it just looks different. I am used to having shadows under a window, but I think I can definitely uh, get used to having borders around my windows. It's, it's really not that big of a deal and it's really good. And you can directly go to windows management settings from over here. Uh, I guess the button isn't working or maybe it actually did, but it didn't open the settings app. Anyway, it's fine. It's in alpha. Okay. Under the hood, we do get a lot of changes. Lib Cosmic rebased on ICE to 0.13. So they are making changes. You do get a bunch of things more and notable bug fixes is Cosmic Alps launch in the live ISO for NVIDIA desktops. Improved disk IO and DBus performance when using sliders or changing theme settings, setting up the time zone on the date and the time settings page. Additional improvements, lots of things. Cosmic Greeter now defaults to previous session used when logging in. Uh, this is especially important for me if I actually log into Cosmic and the next time I am going to log in, it would by default log me into Cosmic and not the, the Pop! OS GNOME session. We do get release and schedule changes. The second Cosmic Alpha will be released on September 26th, so that is today right now. Those participating in Alpha 1 on Pop! OS can simply update through the Cosmic App Store to transition. I just updated through the GNOME Store. Uh, it just is it's the same, really. This Alpha will be followed out by monthly Alpha releases until all core features have been built out. And you can also have a fresh install if you like. I'm going to leave the link to it below the like button. And I believe that covers it all. I mean, this looks amazing. It really does look amazing. You have workspaces. These are horizontal right now. You can change it to vertical. Applications, office system, utilities, applets. Look at this. Everything. It's just so granular control over everything. I really, really love this. I cannot express it more. Terminal looks really good. The yellow and the black combination looks really good with the earth. Look, it, it looks fantastic. And the dock, I have the dock configured like this. I'm not really sure if it's glitching out in OBS uh, like it like like it happened a few months ago when uh, it was in, in the pre-alpha stage, but four months have passed since then and I'm really, really confident in System76. Not that I wasn't back then, I always was confident in them and they did deliver a fantastic uh, operating system, a fantastic uh, user experience to people. And with that, I would sign off from today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. It's getting really late and I have to edit this video right now. Again, thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next time. Peace.